The sun casts a warm, golden light upon the picturesque village, nestled amidst the lush vineyards of the French countryside. A gentle breeze rustles through the leaves of the centuries-old oak trees that line the cobblestone streets, carrying with it the faint aroma of freshly picked grapes and crushed chardonnay. The village, known for its timeless charm and artistic spirit, seems to hum with anticipation as it awaits the return of Elise Durand. Elise, a talented young painter with a passion for capturing the essence of her surroundings, had left the village several years ago to study art in Paris. Now she has returned, seeking inspiration for her next masterpiece. As she meanders through the quaint streets, her chestnut hair dancing in the wind, she can't help but feel a sense of belonging and comfort wash over her. It's as if the village has been waiting for her, whispering stories of its vineyards and secrets into the wind, eager to be brought to life through her brush strokes. Her steps lead her to the outskirts of the village, where Grand Chateau overlooks the vineyards. It's the estate of the Moro family, known for their esteemed winery and their elusive young vintner, Julian. She hasn't seen him since they were children, but the memories of their shared laughter and adventures come flooding back to her as she approaches the estate gates. As she walks up the gravel path, she spots him tending to a row of grapevines, his back turned to her. His broad shoulders move rhythmically as he works, his dark hair gleaming in the sunlight. Elise can't help but feel a surge of affection for him as she watches him work, so intent on his task that he seems oblivious to her presence. She clears her throat, and Julian turns around, a surprised expression on his face. His deep, thoughtful gaze meets hers, and she's momentarily lost in those pools of brown. His warm smile spreads across his face, and she feels her heart skip a beat. Elise! he exclaims, pushing himself up from the dirt. It's so good to see you! He steps forward and engulfs her in a tight embrace, his strong arms enveloping her. I wasn't sure if you'd ever come back. Elise feels herself blush as she pulls away her eyes darting shyly to the ground. I'm sorry it took so long, she says softly. I've missed you. The familiarity of his touch, the scent of him, all of it makes her realize how much she's missed this place and the people in it. How have you been? She asks, genuinely curious about his life since she left. Oh, you know, Julian says with a laugh, waving his hand dismissively. The usual. Vintages come and go, grapes get crushed, that sort of thing. But honestly, it's been a bit dull without you around. His smile fades as he studies her face, and he seems to realize the weight of their shared situation. So, what brings you back to the village? Elise hesitates, unsure how to broach the subject. She knows Julian has been working tirelessly to restore the family winery to its former glory and she's aware of his ambitions to compete in international wine competitions. But she also knows that her presence here, as a talented artist, could be a double-edged sword. I, I've been wanting to paint the vineyards in the village for a while now, she says, choosing her words carefully. The scenery here is just so beautiful and inspiring. I feel like I've missed out on so much by being gone. Julian's expression brightens at this, and he steps closer to her taking her hand in his. You're right, he says earnestly. This place does have a special magic. I'm glad you felt it calling you back. He pauses, looking into her eyes intently. And if you need any help or, or company while you're here, you know I'm always here for you. The warmth in his voice sends a shiver down Elisa's spine, and she finds herself wondering what it would be like to spend time with him, to explore the vineyards and share in their beauty. She knows that their dreams and ambitions might pull them apart, but she can't help but feel a deep connection to Julian, a connection that runs deeper than friendship. Thank you, Julian, she says softly, squeezing his hand. That means a lot to me. The air between them seems to crackle with an unspoken tension, and they stand there, eyes locked, for what feels like an eternity. The sun continues to climb higher in the sky, bathing the vineyards in a warm, golden light and the gentle breeze rustles through the leaves above them, carrying with it the promise of another beautiful day. Shall we explore? Julian finally breaks the silence, offering his elbow to Elise. She takes it, feeling a thrill of anticipation course through her veins. Together, they wander through the vineyards, discussing the different grape varietals, 
the art of winemaking, and their hopes and dreams for the future. Elise listens intently as Julian describes his plans to enter the winery into international competitions, his eyes shining with determination and pride. As they walk, they stumble upon a hidden clearing, nestled among the vines. It's a small, secluded spot, dappled with sunlight, and it feels as if they've stepped into another world. They sit down on a nearby blanket, their backs against a towering oak tree, and Elise pulls out her sketchbook, eager to capture the beauty of their surroundings. Julian watches her intently, a look of admiration in his eyes as she works her charcoal across the page, bringing the vines and the trees, the sky and the grass, to life. That's beautiful, he whispers, reaching out to brush a stray hair from her face. Their hands linger for a moment, fingers entwined, and Elise feels a shiver run down her spine. It reminds me of you. She looks up at him, her heart racing, and sees the same mixture of desire and uncertainty in his eyes that she feels inside herself. For a moment, they simply gaze at each other, lost in the depths of their connection. Then, with a sigh, Julian leans forward, his lips meeting hers in a tender, questioning kiss. Elise responds eagerly, returning his affection, as the world around them fades away, and all that remains is the taste of wine and the sweet, sweet sound of their shared heartbeats. The kiss deepens, becoming more urgent and passionate, and their bodies press tightly together. They roll onto their sides, tangled in the vines, and Julian begins to nibble at her neck, drawing a shiver from her. Elise moans softly, arching her back, as she explores the strong, defined muscles of his chest and shoulders. Their hands move over each other's bodies, tracing lines of desire and longing. As they make love in the soft grass, surrounded by the vines that have been a part of their lives for as long as they can remember, they feel a newfound sense of freedom and connection. They are no longer just the vintner and the artist. They are two people in love, sharing a moment that will forever change the course of their lives. When they finally come together in a shared climax, their bodies entwined, the sky above them seems to grow brighter, the air warmer. They lie there for a while, catching their breath, their hearts still racing. Elise looks up at the trellis above them, the green leaves and white grapes swaying gently in the breeze, and she feels a newfound sense of purpose and joy. She has found her home here, with Julian, in this beautiful vineyard, and she knows that together, they can achieve anything. I love you, she whispers, nuzzling into his chest. I've always loved you. He presses a tender kiss to her forehead. I know, he whispers back. I've loved you for so long, too. They lie there in silence for a while longer, basking in the afterglow of their passion and the warmth of the sun, their future stretching out before them, brighter and more promising than ever. And as the day wears on, they fall asleep in each other's arms, secure in the knowledge that they have found their home, and their hearts, in this beautiful vineyard. In the weeks that follow, their love only grows deeper. They work side by side, tending to the vines, pruning and training them, their hands moving in harmony, their minds in sync. Elise continues to sketch the vines and the grapes, capturing their beauty in her sketchbook, and she begins to experiment with new techniques, using the colors of the wine to paint the landscape that surrounds them. Julian, meanwhile, pours his heart into the wine, blending different varietals, aging them in oak barrels, crafting each bottle with the same care and attention that he reserves for Elise. He enters their first vintage into several competitions, and to their delight, it is met with critical acclaim, winning several awards and garnering international attention. Their love story spreads throughout the village like wildfire, and they become the talk of the town. But they don't mind the attention, they revel in it, basking in the warmth of the community that has embraced them both. They host parties in the vineyard, inviting their neighbors and friends to share in their happiness, and as they watch everyone dancing beneath the stars, glasses of wine raised in toast to their newfound love, they feel a profound sense of contentment and belonging. As the years pass, they continue to tend to their vines, to make love in the grass, and to build their life together. They expand their vineyard, experimenting with new grape varietals and winemaking techniques, always striving to create something unique and special. And though they face challenges along the way, they confront them together, their bonds stronger than any obstacle. Eventually, their children arrive, and with them, a newfound sense of wonder and joy. 
They watch their children run through the vines, laughing and playing, and they know that they have created a legacy that will endure for generations to come. As they stand together, hand in hand, gazing out over their vineyard on a crisp autumn evening, they realize that their love story has only just begun. I love you, Elise whispers, her voice barely audible over the rustling of the leaves. I love you more, Julian replies with a grin, pressing a tender kiss to her forehead. Always. And as they stand there, surrounded by the vines that have become their life, they know that they will remain together, forever intertwined, their love as strong and as resilient as the roots of the grapevines beneath their feet. The years continue to pass, each one more wonderful than the last. They watch their children grow up, fall in love, and start their own lives. Their grandchildren arrive, tiny fingers reaching for the grapes, giggles filling the air. The vineyard expands, the family grows, and the love that Julian and Elise share becomes the beating heart of it all. They continue to tend to their vines, to make wine, to create something beautiful out of the earth. But as they look back on their life together, they realize that their greatest achievement is not the awards they've won or the accolades they've received. It's the love they've shared, the family they've built, and the memories they've created that will live on long after they are gone. They retire from the day-to-day -day work of the vineyard, passing the torch to their children and grandchildren. But they remain an integral part of the family, their wisdom and experience guiding the next generation as they continue to write their own chapter in the story of the vineyard. They spend their days sitting together in the shade of the old oak tree, watching the world go by, sipping wine from crystal glasses, and reminiscing about the past. They laugh at the memories of their youth, the challenges they faced, and the adventures they've shared. And as they do, they know that their love has only grown deeper, stronger, more profound with each passing year. I love you, Julian says, taking her hand in his. I have loved you from the moment I first saw you, standing there among the vines. And I will love you until the end of time. Elise smiles up at him, her eyes twinkling with love and joy. And I you, she says, leaning in to press a gentle kiss to his weathered cheek. I have loved you since the first moment, too. And I will love you forever. The sun sets over the vineyard, painting the sky in shades of orange and pink. The air is thick with the scent of grapes and the sounds of laughter. But for Julian and Elise, there is nothing more beautiful or more perfect than this moment, here in their vineyard, with the love of their lives by their side. They watch as their children dance together, young and carefree, oblivious to the challenges that lie ahead. They see the future unfolding before them, filled with love and joy and the promise of new beginnings. And they know that they have played a part in creating this future, this family, this life. As they sit together, hand in hand, Julian leans in and whispers in Elisa's ear, You are my everything, you know that? She turns to him, her eyes shining with tears of happiness, and nods. And you, she replies, are my home. They laugh softly the sound filling the air like music. They close their eyes, taking in the warmth of the sun, the coolness of the breeze, and the sweetness of the grapes. In this moment, they feel at peace, at ease, surrounded by everything and everyone they love. They know that they have lived a life filled with love and adventure, and that their story will continue to inspire and touch the lives of those around them for generations to come. And as the stars begin to twinkle in the night sky, Julian takes Elisa's hand, and together they rise, swaying to the music of their hearts, the rhythm of their love. They dance beneath the stars, beneath the vines, beneath the light of the moon. They dance, knowing that they will dance together forever. Their love is eternal, their bond unbreakable. It is as strong and as resilient as the roots of the great vines that have grown around them, entwined with their lives, with their history, with their future. And as they dance beneath the stars, they know that they are not just dancing with each other, but with the generations that have come before them, and the ones that will come after. They are part of something greater than themselves, something timeless and enduring. Something as beautiful and as precious as the wine they have spent their lives creating. The music swirls around them, a haunting melody that speaks of love and loss, joy and sorrow. It is the soundtrack to their lives, the rhythm of their hearts, the beat of their souls. They sway together, their bodies moving in perfect harmony as if they are one being, one entity, sharing the same breath, the same thoughts. 
and as they dance, they feel the weight of the years falling away, the burdens of responsibility lifting from their shoulders. For in this moment, they are simply Julian and Elise, a man and a woman who have found each other amidst the vines, who have built a life together, who have created a family that will endure long after they are gone. The stars twinkle overhead, a million pinpricks of light against the velvet blackness of the sky. A cool breeze rustles through the vines, carrying with it the scent of crushed grapes and the promise of harvest to come. And as they dance, they know that this moment is eternal, that their love will live on, that their story will continue to inspire and touch the lives of those who come after them. They are the keepers of the flame, the guardians of the vineyard, the embodiment of all that is good and true and beautiful in the world. Finally, they reach the end of their dance, their breath coming in ragged gasps, their hearts racing with the exertion and the emotion of it all. Julian leans in, his lips brushing against Elisa's ear, and whispers, You are the wine of my life, my love. The only thing I've ever wanted, the only thing that matters. Tears well up in her eyes, and she smiles up at him, feeling his words wash over her like a warm summer breeze. They walk hand in hand back to their chairs, the gravel crunching beneath their feet. The music continues to play, a haunting melody that seems to echo their every emotion. As they sit down, they take in the view around them, the vines stretching out in every direction, the flickering candles casting a soft, golden glow over everything. It's a peaceful scene, a moment of respite from the chaos of the world, and they know that they have created this sanctuary, this haven for themselves and their family. Elise reaches over and takes Julian's hand, lacing their fingers together. Do you remember when we first started out? She asks, her voice barely above a whisper. When we were young and full of dreams, and everyone thought we were crazy? He smiles down at her, his eyes twinkling in the candlelight. Yes, I remember. It seems like a lifetime ago now. They sit there, lost in their memories, reliving the highs and lows of their journey together. The night air is filled with the scent of lavender and rosemary, and the distant sound of crickets singing their nighttime song. As they look out over the vineyard, they know that they have built something truly special here, something that will endure long after they are gone. You know, Julian says, turning to face her. It's funny. When we were younger, we always thought we had to choose between our dreams and our love. But now I don't know. I think maybe we got it all. She smiles up at him, her eyes shining with love and appreciation. Yes, she says. I think you're right. We did get it all. They sit there in the stillness of the night, lost in each other's gaze, their hearts full to bursting with the knowledge that they have built something truly extraordinary together. The stars overhead seem to grow brighter, the constellations coming into focus, as if the universe itself is taking notice of their accomplishments. A gentle breeze stirs the vines, causing them to rustle softly, and carries with it the faint scent of the grapes, just beginning to ripen on the vine. It's a peaceful, serene moment and they both feel as if they could sit there forever, basking in the glow of their love and their achievements. But even as they revel in the present, they are also aware of the challenges that lie ahead. The world is changing, and with it, the wine industry. They must adapt, must continue to innovate and push the boundaries of what is possible. They must remain vigilant in protecting their vineyard, their family, their legacy. Do you think we'll be able to keep up with the times? Elise asks, her voice tinged with uncertainty. I don't know, Julian says, taking her hand in his. But I do know that we'll face whatever comes our way, together. Just like we've faced everything else. She smiles up at him, feeling the warmth of his hand and the strength of his words. As they sit there, lost in their thoughts and their memories, they don't notice the figure approaching them through the vines. It's not until the figure clears their throat that they look up, startled. It's their daughter, Sabine, standing there, a mischievous glint in her eye. Well, she says, I think it's time for a toast. They exchange amused glances, rising to their feet. To us, Sabine says, raising her glass. And to the next hundred years of Chateau de la Garde. They clink their glasses together, taking a sip of the wine, and as they savor its complex flavors and aromas, they know that they are not only toasting to their past, but also to the future. The years pass, and Sabine takes over as head of the winery, 
guiding it through new challenges and opportunities. The world continues to change, but their vineyard remains a constant, a testament to their love and dedication. They watch as their grandchildren run through the rows of vines, laughing and playing, and they know that the legacy they have created will live on for generations to come. They continue to work side by side, their hands calloused and stained with earth, but their hearts still full of the same passion that drove them when they were young. They look back on their lives and see not only a lifetime of hard work and sacrifice, but also a story of enduring love and unwavering commitment to each other and their dreams. As they sit together under the stars, gazing out over the vineyard, they know that they have built something truly special, something that will always be a part of them, no matter where life takes them. One afternoon, as they are enjoying a glass of wine in the old stone cellar, they hear a faint knocking at the front door. They exchange knowing glances, and with a sigh, Julian rises to his feet. I suppose we'd better go see who that could be, he says, walking towards the door. They follow him, their footsteps echoing through the ancient halls of the chateau. When they reach the door, Julian opens it to reveal a young man, barely more than a boy, standing on the step. Hello? the young man says hesitantly. My name is Thomas. I'm a writer, and I'm doing some research on Chateau de Lagarde. I was hoping to speak with someone who could tell me more about its history, and about the people who made it all possible. Elise and Sabine exchange another glance, this one filled with amusement and pride. It seems that their story has traveled far and wide, capturing the imagination of people all over the world. They invite Thomas inside, offering him a glass of wine and sitting down to share their tale. They speak of the early days, of their courtship and their decision to start a life together on this piece of land. They talk about the challenges they faced, the risks they took, and the sacrifices they made. They share stories of working side by side in the vineyard, of nurturing their grapes and crafting their wine, of building a family and a legacy that has withstood the test of time. As they speak, Thomas listens intently, jotting down notes in a leather-bound notebook. Sometimes, he asks questions, seeking clarification or more detail, and Elise and Sabine are happy to oblige. It's a warm, inviting atmosphere, and Thomas feels like he's been welcomed into their family. When the sun begins to set, casting a warm golden light through the windows, they all know it's time to go. They exchange hugs and promises to keep in touch, and as Thomas walks down the driveway, he can't help but feel inspired by their story, their resilience, and their unwavering devotion to each other and their vineyard. Years pass, and Thomas's book on Chateau de Lagarde becomes an international bestseller, telling the story of Elise and Julian's love and dedication to their vineyard. The winery continues to thrive under Sabine's leadership, expanding its reach and reputation around the world. As Elise and Julian grow older, they remain active in the day-to-day -day operations of the winery, their hands still callous from years of tending to the vines. They take great pride in watching Sabine carry on their legacy, and in the countless visitors who now come to the chateau to learn about their incredible journey. One spring afternoon, as they are sitting in the garden, enjoying the warm sun on their faces, a familiar figure approaches them. It's Thomas, now an older man himself walking with a cane but still bearing the same spark of curiosity that had drawn him to the chateau all those years ago. He sits down beside them, and they exchange pleasantries, catching up on each other's lives. They talk about the changes they've seen in the world, both good and bad, and how their vineyard has served as a constant source of strength and stability for them throughout it all. As the afternoon wears on, the shadows begin to lengthen, and the scent of blossoming flowers fills the air. Elise looks at Julian and Sabine, and then back at Thomas, and she feels an overwhelming sense of gratitude. Gratitude for the life they've built together, for the love they share, and for the countless people who have been touched by their story. She takes a deep breath, inhaling the fragrance of the grapes and the roses, and knows that even as they grow older and eventually pass on, their legacy will live on, intertwined with the vines and the soil of Chateau de Lagarde. They sit in silence for a while, content to simply enjoy the moment, savoring the peace and beauty of the setting. Finally, Thomas stands up, thanking them for their time and hospitality. As he turns to leave, Elise calls out to him, Thomas, dear boy, you should never forget that your own story is just beginning. 
There are still chapters to be written, adventures to be had, and lessons to be learned. Carpe diem, as they say. Seize the day. Thomas smiles warmly at her, feeling a new sense of purpose welling up inside him. He nods in agreement, promising himself that he will live each day to the fullest, just as Elise and Julian have done. As he walks down the path toward his car, he glances back one last time at the chateau, the vineyard stretching out before it like a patchwork quilt of emerald green and purple. He can't help but feel a sense of awe and reverence for the place and the people who have made it their home. Time passes, and Thomas continues to write, now chronicling the stories of other vineyards and winemakers from around the world. His works become bestsellers, and he travels far and wide, sharing their stories with eager audiences. He never forgets the lessons he learned at Chateau de la Garde, and he carries with him a piece of their legacy wherever he goes. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it.